Hey guys, in this particular screencast we're going to be taking a look at the distance formula and how to use it to solve this type of problem. Um, this particular version of solving this type of problem is going to be more algebra heavy, so I've already gone ahead and written the distance formula down for us. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at this first point right here that we see, which is 0, 4, and I'm just going to call that point A so that we have a reference name for it. And over here, this x comma 6, I'm going to color code that as blue and call that B. Well, when we're looking at these two points here, this is actually where we get our x1 and y1, x2 and y2 from. So looking at this, if we look at A here, we know that that's 0 comma 4. And like I said, this is where we're going to get x1 and y1 from. And then if we look over here at B, what we get is we see that we have x comma 6. And this x value right here is really the x2 that we see in this formula right here. And this y is really the y2 that we see in this formula right here. So with that being said, we actually have enough information to be able to fill in all of our information here. So I'm just going to erase this so that we have a little bit more room to work with. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to plug our values into this. Now, it already tells us that the distance between these is 8 units. Well, that's D right here. And then we know that x1 is 0. So I'm just going to say 0 minus this x2 right here, which is x, has to be squared. And then in this set of parentheses here, our y values go in. Well, y1 is 4, and our y2 is 6, and just make sure that we square it. So cleaning that math up a little bit inside of the parentheses and following our order of operations, we get negative x squared plus 4 minus 6 is negative 2 squared. And we just keep going with our order of operations inside of this radical until we can't do any more. Well, negative x squared is just going to be x squared. And then negative 2 squared gives us 4. At this point, what we want to do is we want to find a way to try and get this x squared out of the radical. And what we want to do is we want to say, okay, well, I know that if I square a radical, that that will cancel it out. But if I do it to one side of the equation, I have to do it to the other side. So at this point, squaring this radical is going to simply cancel it out. And then squaring 8 is going to give me 64. That leaves me with this right here. Now getting the x squared by itself, since I want to solve for x, I'm going to subtract 4 from each side, which is going to leave me with 60 equals x squared. And then to undo this square, I'm going to use the inverse of what a square is to get rid of that square, which is just square rooting it. Now where this kind of starts to go a little awry for us is the fact that in 8th grade math, you were told to leave your solution like this because square roots were positive. But we actually know that square roots give us both a positive and a negative. So in this case, x could be equal to positive or negative 60. And if we wanted to simplify that radical a little bit further, we could come over here and say, okay, well, I know that 6 times 10 is really 60, so I could put that inside of a square root. And then looking at each of those, I can say 6 is really 2 times 3, and 10 is really 2 times 5. And looking at this, I can see that I have a 2 right here and a 2 right there, which means I get to pull them out of the square root as a single 2 and leave, leaving 3 and 5 on the inside to give me 15. So if I wanted to, I could really rewrite this square root 60 over here as this radical right here. So really, if we wanted to write this in simplest terms, I could say that x is plus or minus the square root not the square root, but 2 times the square root of 15. So looking at that right there gives us one solution to this particular problem, and it's a fairly straightforward solution if you feel comfortable using the algebra. This is one of the few geometry types of problems that I would say simple algebra is probably one of the fastest ways to find the solution. If you have any questions, remember my email address is drenimath at gmail.com, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.